Oh, praise the Lord. Good morning. What a great day. What a great day. Listen, I'm so excited about what God is doing and what he's been working in my life. And you know, sometimes uh, God begins to deal with us in areas that aren't as easy as others. It, just me? Okay. Uh, Subject. I'll never forget, I, I've, been, I've been in ministry a long time. I love, when, when I found serving others and when I found working for God, when I found it, it was like all of the, everything aligned for me and I realized this is where I want to be from now on. Uh, I was uh, 17 to 18. I'm not going to tell you how long that was, but it's been a long time. And I remember my wife and I, we got involved with, we've been involved with different pastors and different ministries, but we got involved in a ministry that was just like anything I wanted to do or if I, anything they needed, man, if I wanted to work, they just started handing me stuff. And we had, I had a Sunday school class. My wife had a Sunday school class. I did youth group on Wednesday night. We drove the van and picked up kid, people uh, for church on Sunday morning, on Sunday night and Tuesday night. So we were going four or five nights a week, just going, and, and we would, my, my children would, uh, in the morning, they'd be getting breakfast on the bus in the morning, and then we would feed them lunch in the afternoon, because we would spend all, it, long trips, several hours a day on the bus back and forth. And we were just serving the Lord and serving the Lord, and man, it was just great. And, and I remember, I just started feeling down. What? And I just started getting grumpy. And my wife noticed first. And um, we were all sitting at a, a restaurant after service. And she says to me, she says, you need to go talk to pastor. And I'm not going to go talk to pastor. I'm not going to talk to pastor. And then my wife, in her loving way, was like, you're going to go talk to pastor, or I'm going to go talk to pastor. Which way would you like that? I'm not recommending it. I'm just saying it was motivation, and I said, I'll go talk to the pastor. And I went down, and I sat across the table from my pastor, and I sat down, and I opened my mouth, and I said, you know, I'm just feeling this and this and this. And he stopped me right there. He said, Mark chapter 6, it's come ye apart and rest for a while, or come ye apart, whichever you want. <laughs> come ye apart. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus tells the disciples they had been ministering. The Bible says they had been ministering and working and doing so much stuff. They'd been so busy, not even so much to take any leisure time. And he said, come apart and rest for a while. I'm going to preach. The last few weeks, I've given you 10 points. 10-point messages. Today, I'm going to give you a one-point message. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. And here's the point right here. It, it's called the pause. The pause. Taking a break. If you're going to grow in the Lord, we've been talking about how to grow in the Lord. Did you know if you're going to grow in the Lord, one of the greatest things you can do, and, and I'm going to spend a little time trying to explain how, one of the greatest things you can do is stop and pause and think about what's going on. Think about where you are. Think about what's happening. The, the scripture says in Luke chapter 6, it says that Jesus separated himself and he began to go away on his own. And he did this right before he came back and picked the 12 apostles. Jesus paused. Spent some time in prayer. Spent some time thanking to God. Spent some time just pausing. In, in the same in Luke chapter 5 and 16, 16, the Bible says that Jesus withdrew himself. If Jesus needed to pause... And withdraw himself. How do you think we need to pause and withdraw ourselves? We do. We do. All right, turn with me to Matthew chapter 26. I gave you a bunch of scriptures. Let's turn to this one. Matthew chapter 26. Wow, you're fast. Who was that? By the way, if you say amen fast enough, it's a race and you get candy. 
What? Oops, there you go. So if I give you the scripture and you say amen real fast, I might give you candy. Now, I'm not even there yet. Oh, my goodness. What did I say, Matthew 26? All right, Matthew 26, the pause. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. 26, 36. All right, I'm trying to get there. Sorry, I was at 24 and it didn't make any sense to me. All right, 24, 23, 6, 36. I was there. You got me, you went there fast. You got me all messed up. Jesus, then comes Jesus into the place of Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit you here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two sons Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And he said to them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry you here and watch with me. And he went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed saying, oh my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. He's preparing for the crucifixion. And he came to his disciples, verse 40, and he found them asleep. And he said to Peter, could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time, and he prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may pass away from me, if this cup may not pass away except I drink it, your will be done. And he came back, and he found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and he went away again, and he prayed the third time saying the same thing. And then he came to his disciples and he said to them, Sleep on, take your rest. The hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up and let's be going. I love this. This is Jesus right here. Fine, you want to sleep? Go ahead and sleep. Oh, nope, just kidding. Time to get up. <laughs> he said, time to get up. Can you not? Watch with me for now. What it, I had to look it all up. I looked all that word up, and I looked watch up, and I looked what it meant. And, I, and it, the word watch comes from the root word, which it, it, it means to uh, it means to to collect yourself or gather your thoughts to watch. It means to collect yourself to understand what's going. On. The thing is, if we don't pause and collect ourselves. We will, st in today's society, in our life, we will stay so busy that we won't even know we're on the wrong path for miles. I'll never forget, my mom and I, we were traveling uh, to Dallas. I was taking my mom shopping. This was, we were in Texas, and it was years ago. And we're driving along, we're just talking about the Lord, and we're talking about things, and we're driving along, and we're driving along. And if you miss your exit when you're going into, the, into Dallas and Fort Worth area, if you miss your exit, it's the biggest loop you've ever seen in your life. It just kind of goes all the way around Dallas and Fort Worth and then comes right back to where you were. So my wife and I, my mom and I, and we're driving and we're talking about the Lord and we miss our exit and we just keep talking about the Lord. We realize where we were. And we're like, wow, we're not anywhere where we're supposed to be. So we turn around, we drive back. We miss our exit again. The thing about what I want to talk to you about in your personal growth, the thing I want you to understand if you're going to grow is that you're going to need to stop and quiet yourself. You're going to need to collect your thoughts. You're going to need to, if you're just going to run on, on autopilot, you can't have intentional growth. T uh, today, we're going, to do, uh, we're going to do communion. I'm so excited about it. We're, we're going to serve communion today. We're going to have communion together. And, and I, I want to talk about what, what it is that, the example of communion is an example of what I want you to understand today. Okay, so this is in uh, Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, verse 14, Matthew, Mark, Luke 22, verse 14, man, that kid's fast, Luke 22, 14, Luke 22, 14, I had an aunt, she always wanted to yell bingo, and I would keep repeating that, Luke 22, 14, bingo, no. 
And when the hour was come, and he sat down with the, disciples, with the twelve apostles with him, and he said, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he said, This is, the, this is the, take this and divide it amongst yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them. He said, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance for me. And also the cup afterward said, this is the cup of the New Testament which is my blood which is shed for you. Say communion. This is a, a, a ceremony. There's very few ceremonies that the Christian church still kind of holds to. This is one of them. Now, the reason that we hold to communion, one, he said, do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. But we, we, we do so because communion is the explaining of the old Passover ceremony. Now, if you're, you're not going to get a, a huge lesson in a Passover. I'm just going to give you, remember, you got the children of Israel. They're all in Egypt. They're all in bondage and they're all slaves. Most of them had, well, 500 years. So they had grown up being slaves and only knowing slavery. And God said, I'm going, to free the Egypt, I'm going to free you from Egypt. And the plagues begin to come down. And the final plague came out. And he said, here's the deal. When there were frogs, guess who experienced all of the frogs? The Egyptians and God's chosen people. When there was locusts, guess who experienced all of, of the bad? Everybody. But God said, I'm going to bring one more judgment on, on Egypt. So, but this judgment is going to be very, very, very severe. The firstborn son of every family is going to die. He said, on this one, my people are not going to experience the curse. Only the Egyptians. He said, so here's what's going to happen. He said, the death angel is going to come over, and this time you're going to take the blood. You're going to take the blood of a, of a lamb, and you're going to put it over your doorpost. And if you put the blood over your doorposts for the first time, you will not experience the curse. Only those without the blood. Right? So this is a big deal. So they put the blood over their doorpost, and the death angel come by, and he would pass over any household that had the blood on the doorposts. So now they celebrated this. They did this festival. They did it year after year after year. It was called Passover meal. And they would slay a lamb. And, 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 and they would do this. The, the Israelites did it for year after year after year after year. And Jesus comes along. And on Passover, this is when the lamb would be slain. By the way, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, Jesus was crucified and, and died exactly the same time that the lamb was, was supposed to be slain. A lot of things that you could go into there that shows Jesus became the lamb that was slain to put the do blood over the doorpost. And so Jesus is saying, here's the thing. This new thing is about my body, which is now going to be broken for you. We're going to fulfill the Passover, he said. That was a great thing. We're going to fulfill the Passover. And now, when you put my blood over you, then the curses that are on the world no longer go on you. Right? So when we take communion, we're remembering the broken body of Christ, the blood of Christ, which separates me from the curse of the law, you should be saying now, me and amen a little bit happier than that. Separates me from the curse of the law. And we do this ceremony. But here's what's interesting. All right, turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. You guys are fast. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 11, 23. For I have received of the Lord, this is Paul teaching about communion, and that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. 
And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that drinks, eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. If we would judge ourselves. See, you have to understand, this isn't a small thing taking the blood of Christ and the body of Christ. If you were an Israelite, and you heard the thing, put the blood on your doorpost, and you said, nah, I'm not going to do that. And you didn't follow the procedure. When the death angel came, your house and the oldest in your house died. Wasn't a small thing. And so what, I want, what we have is we have this idea. He said, examine yourself before you take communion. Why? What God is trying to tell you is what I'm trying to tell you is that if we don't pause and reflect upon where we are in our life, I, like to, I think communion is like this. You know, we're sheep, right? Why did God call us sheep? Well, because sheep are dumb. And I'm not looking at anybody. He said, we're sheep. And God is the shepherd. He said, I'm the great shepherd, the good shepherd. Sheep, are put their, they'll sit, they will just, they're down there, they're eating, they got their head down, they're just doing what they do. And I believe communion is the time when the sheep pick the head up to see where the shepherd's at. And if we don't pause to reflect on our life, is what I'm doing working. I love it. Alcoholics Anonymous, they have this saying. It's a, maybe, maybe you've heard of it. It's the, the definition of insanity. You guys know what this is? Do the same thing over and over and over and expect a different result. It's like you watch a TV show, right? And you've seen it before. You quit rooting for the guy because you know, I've seen this before, he always does the same thing. He always does the same thing. Insanity is doing the same. And here's what happens. When we begin to just go through life and do the, the, just do what we do every day and do it, do it, do it, do it, and don't pause to see where the shepherd's at, we don't stop to look where God's at in our life, stop to ask a question. Do you know how easy it is to continue in, in a sin or in an area of your life? You know how easy it is? You just keep doing it every day, every day, every day. Pretty quick, you don't even think about it. I'm not looking at you. I got to be honest with you. Of all of the principles that I've been studying, this has by far been the hardest for me. Because I am a, I'm a, I, I, they, they didn't know what it was, but I've always been super hyper my whole life. I know you can't tell. <laughs> and one of the hardest things I've had to try to do this week is pause and see where my life is at with God. What's going on in my life, God? Where am I at right now? If you don't begin to spend some time, secret time, between you and God, I love that scripture, remember it says that the Lord who sees you in secret will reward you openly. It says go find a secret place to begin to pray. Go find a place to begin to spend time with God. If you don't chisel out a little bit of time to spend time with God, to take a little bit of a pause in life, life will keep you busy. You, you could say amen because you know I'm telling you the truth. It's easy to get busy. It's hard to purposely pause. But if you don't purposely pause, tell me how do you know where you are with God? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I've found myself in a lot of times in my life not stopping to say, God, 
I want to hear from you. I had this preacher, and he began to teach us. I, I, I'm not, not, he began to teach about hearing God's voice, and I'm like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I want to hear God, I want to hear God, I want to hear God. Oh. I hear all these people say that I, I heard God, and I'm like, that's me, that's me. I want to hear God, I want to hear God. So I started praying. I, I was like, I want to hear you. And, and the church had a prayer list, and it went around, and it was long. It grew into big, two couple big pages of prayer lists. And I, I want to hear God. 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 And I was super excited about it. So I would take this list, and I would go in, and, and, and somewhere somebody was talking about the ways you pray, kneeling or whatever. And, and I heard somebody say, man, the, the most humbling way to pray is on your face before the Lord. So I sprawl out on the floor. I was serious about hearing God, so I would sprawl out on the floor, and I'm laying out on the floor, and I got my list, and I'm praying through the list, and I'm going down through there, and I'm praying this, and praying that, and praying this, and so-and-so, and sister so-and-so, and brother so-and-so, and I'd pray in the list, and pray in the list, and at the very end of the list, it was a long list, I put, I want to hear your voice. It took me two hours to pray through the list. I did it every day, two weeks. Every day, two hours on my face, Lord, I want to pray in this list to get to the end. I want to hear your voice. 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 Amen. I would get up. And two weeks later, it dawned on me. I had never one time in two weeks shut my mouth and listened. I never stopped and paused and gave God a chance to direct me, to lead me, and to speak to me. So I just kind of stopped and I just paused. Listen, we have to get to a point in our life where we will listen. God is a gentleman. God is a very gentle, gentle God. And it's too easy to get busy and to be running and to get a little crazy life and not stop and pause and listen and listen to where God's at in your life. You have to pause with Him. It's between you and Him. But I was there anyway. So what happened? Did you hear God's voice? Yeah, freaked me out. Now, I'm going to tell you some stuff. This is absolutely true. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy, and I'm not crazy. But I was sitting there, and I was listening, and I heard, I don't know how to explain this. I heard a voice, but when it touched my skin, I could feel it. And when it passed through my mind, I thought it. And when it hit my ears, I heard it. It was, the be it was better than a Bose stereo system. Because it moved right through my being as I heard him speak to me for the first time. Because my mind thought it, my ears heard it, and I felt it in my body as he went through me. And he said, Dale, I'm here. I flipped out, freaked out, got up and took off. Really? Let me tell you something. You start hearing audible voices and see if you don't freak out. I jumped up and I ran out and I found my mom and I went to find my mom. I said, Mom, 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 did you call me? Did you call me? Did you call me? And she was, I'll never forget, she's standing at the, she was cooking fried potatoes at the, at the stove. And I come running in there, did you call me? Did you call me? And she's frying a potato. She's like, no, what? And what are you talking about? And then it dawned on me, God just spoke to me. And I ran back to where he was, and of course he had left by then. That's all you heard? That's all I heard. That's all I heard. Now there's a lot more to the story about being able to hear God's voice, begin to understand God's leading, beginning to feel God moving. But it is a still, small, quiet voice. And you've got to quiet yourself. You've got to quiet your thoughts. 
You have to quiet your thoughts. Listen, I understand life gets crazy, and if you don't pause to say to God, God, here I am. I want to hear you. I want you to speak into my life. I want you to be a part of where I am. What is it that I'm doing wrong? Where am I failing you? Where am I not failing you? What's it, what place in my life do you need to fix? Where do you need to be in my life? And you need to take some time to do it. And if you don't schedule it, you won't do it. I'm I'm just being honest with you. If you don't schedule it, you won't do it. What do you do? First of all, I'm going to tell you something. You need to find a place. Growing up, I'll never forget, I have been shaped forever by a sign, a a, a picture in my mind that I still see to this day. It was slipping into my father's bedroom, knelt next to his bed. I found him there a lot of times. He was slipping off, he he had a spot. He would kneel on the side of his bed, and I remember I find, you need to find a place. Why do I need a place? Does any place matter? It only matters because if you don't develop a, 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 if you don't put together a place, a time, you won't do it. This has been one of the hardest things. I, I read a story about a guy who is going to spend five days meditating, and, and, and the scripture talks about that. We're going we're to get to that in just a minute, but spending five days, he said the first two days were horrible. His mind is over here, his mind is over there, his mind is over here. He's thinking about this, that needed done that, that needed done this, that needed. His mind was just running. He said about the third day, he finally started to where he could actually calm himself down and listen. It does not come natural for us to pause and ask God to speak to our hearts. This doesn't come natural. Find a place. I can tell you this week, I've got two places picked out. I did. I picked two places out this week for me because I realized I'm not good at this. But I need to get good at hearing God. Found two places. Make time. Oh, man. I love this. I had this guy. This is like he's telling me. The doctor told the guy. He said, listen, you're going to have to start working out. You're going to have to start working. He said, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. He says, it's going to be, you know. It doesn't take that much time a day. 30 minutes a day. You got to work out. You got to work. I don't have time. I don't have time. He said, do you have time to be dead 24 hours a day? <laughs> if you don't have time to exercise for a half hour a day, how are you like going to be dead 24? I don't have time. If we could pause and hear God, our growth would be expediated. Our life would, it, we would stop we could stop taking the wrong exits. If, are you hearing what I'm saying? We could start figuring out what's working, learn what God is doing in our life. We could begin to walk with God instead of walking against God. Instead of bumping into Him every once in a while, we could start walking with Him. But if you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to stop and, and quiet your life and listen to Him. You're being real quiet. Either one or two things. I've bored you to death. Or you're thinking, all right, I'm going to be done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. The scripture talks about, uh, about meditating. The scripture tells us, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac, the Bible says, he set himself off to meditate for the Lord. Why should I meditate? Well, listen, it worked out really good for him. He stopped and he separated himself to to meditate. And he said, while he was meditating, he saw camels coming his way. Well, you know what was on him, camels? Rebecca, his new wife. (laughs) The Lord brought him a really good wife. While he was stopped and meditating, spending some time. Spending some time. The simple fact is that I want to do communion. I want to take communion with you this morning. Before we take communion this morning, I want to ask you to do me a favor. I want you to pause and I want you to ask God a couple of things. Am I where I should be with you? Is my life right with you? Am I 
where I need to be with you. We're going to stall we're going to take that. Let me give you some examples here. I'm going to pause and I'm going to ask God, God, what are the things that I'm doing in my life that's working? Say, so, well, what do you mean? What things am I growing? Where am I growing? What are the hindrances to my growth? What things are keeping me from growing? You ever had the still small voice start pointing out things in your life? That's not me. The Holy Spirit start pointing out things. You know, what things are keeping me from growing? Where should I be? I love this one. I love this one. Am I living in self-pity? Ooh, that's a good one. That's one you need to ask God. Am I living in self Why? Because these feelings of self-pity will keep us and they'll hold us back. Spend some time, stop and ask God, what is going on in my life right now? What's actually happening in my life right now? Pause, reflect. You know, they say that experience is the best teacher. It's not true. Experience is not the best teacher. Because I know people who experience the same failure over and over and over and over and over again and don't learn nothing. And I'm not looking at any of you. Experience isn't the best teacher, but experience that is evaluated, experience that's reflected on, experience that, is, that we can reflect on becomes great teachers. I want to see you grow. And if you're going to grow, you're going to have to spend some time doing some self-reflection. Listening to God. Trying to find God in your heart. Quiet your spirit. I've heard people say, well, I've never heard God. How, I, I, you know, you, first you should turn off the TV. Maybe turn off the radio. Shut out all the stuff that's coming in from around you. Pause and listen. You want to hear God? You want to feel God's presence? You want to see God move in your life? You want to hear God help you? Pause. Give Him a chance to speak to you. All right, let's pray. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be done. But I, maybe I spend a lot of time here because this one's hard for me. Father, I come before you because I know something. If we're going to grow, probably one of the things that keeps people from growing, I believe probably more than a lot of other things in our life, is we never stop to reflect on what we're doing. We never stop to look, where am I at? We never stop to look up and say, Holy Spirit, am I actually following you or am I just running amok? We never stop to pause and look and say, God, are you moving in my life? Are, are, where are you at? Where am I at? Help me find you. We never pause. I just pray right now the lessons I saw from my father as he would stop and just spend time in prayer and pausing and listening and seeking you. You would teach us to pause, reflect, and see you move in our life. This morning, God, as we take up communion, this is the time when the church, by commandment, is supposed to stop, pause, examine our heart and then take this bread and this cup. And Father, right now we pause. Is my sin under the blood of Christ? Is Christ's blood over my doorposts of my life? Have I received that covering of that blood upon my life? If I have, then I take communion knowing that I am not under the consequences of the curse anymore. God, we pause right now. Wherever you're at this morning, I want to tell you something. God sees your frustrations. God sees your pain. God sees all the stuff that's going on in your life. God sees it. And he wants to be there to bring you out from that. And you can tell him about it. Father, we thank you for this bread. We thank you for this cup. 
we ask you to bless this bread, the broken body of Christ. We ask you to bless this cup, the, the blood of the new covenant. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.